All right, guys, so we're back here in the rescue hangar and we have a lot of stuff to get done in this episode. You're gonna see all this stuff get done and then you're gonna see the Phoenix head over to the body shop after we lift it up with this crane and put it on our big trailer. It's gonna be painted, it's gonna look brand new. It's gonna be the first part that's actually coming to completion. It's like the reborn, the Phoenix coming out of the ashes right up from the fire. Yeah, I'm excited. And Keith and Joe are going to, we have a couple things we gotta patch up yet. We gotta patch some of the old antenna holes because we're moving the antennas around. We don't need as many antennas. Or the holes. Or the holes, yeah, especially the holes. And we want them patched before we paint. Um, we do have to do a little bit of repair, a little bit of a doubler under here for the tie down. This thing was tied down outside for years in the wind, getting all washed around and stuff. So we're gonna fix that up. We're gonna get this thing done today. So uh, sit back and relax and uh, watch a whole bunch of work get done because we're gonna get at it. So wait a second, it yeah. looks like the 401 used to be blue. Yes, it was blue. I think it was like blue and yellow. And it looks like uh, 100%, it needs some help up here. So we just got the doubler that was up there off. And uh, now we see why there was a doubler up there. Maybe we just put a tripler up there. No. Quadrupler. Yeah, we're gonna have to get that patched inside there. Get yeah. it a little bit stronger. For sure. I'm glad we pulled that off. My wow, bulk gets ripped too. So while the guys are getting some work done on the 401, I'm headed over to Brandywine Aviation because Dimitri has some wing cradles for us. We really want to get those 401 wings up off the floor of the hangar so we have more room to get some work done. Let's go. I hear you got some wing cradles for us. I do. I gotta get like the hangar's such a mess right now. So that's gonna help us a lot so we can get those old wings up off the floor and on a cradle so they're out of the way because we got a huge package last week. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, we nice. have all the parts for the 401. And like the whole is. hangar is like just full of stuff. So cool. I just roll out here and grab it. I'll show you what we have. Awesome. That's actually a good, yeah, uh, no, good wing cradle right there. I'm 175 pounds. It's not, it's not that flexing at all. Wow. Yeah. I think it'll work. I don't, I don't know what a 401 wing weighs. I know they're heavy, but I think this will support it really well. And it just needs to stay up off the ground for a while, go in the corner yeah. um, until we find out what we got to take off of them yeah. and what we need. And I think I'm going to end up building, kind of copying this and maybe building another one or two because... At this point, we have all kinds of wings and tails and all kinds of stuff. This looks like this would keep it really safe as well. Yep. Cool. perfect to fit in a bed of truck. It, it slid right up through those well wells. That was close. Awesome, let's get it strapped down and uh, get it back to the hangar. So what if I told you right now, people just like you and me have gotten 32% back on their money. They're getting net returns of 21%, 14%, and even more. Tens of millions of dollars in total paid out in 2022 alone. By doing something that's so easy, you could do it right now in just a few minutes. I know what you're thinking. Jason, look, this sounds way too good to be true. I thought the same thing when I first heard about it, but I've been working with these guys and I've seen the numbers. 
And those numbers, well, they just speak for themselves. With the mess the economy's in, with inflation, with housing and layoffs, you need to try to protect your hard-earned wealth. That's why you guys gotta act now. Because with those kinds of returns, demand is incredibly high. But since they are good partners of the show, they throw me some VIP passes so you guys can skip their wait list. Get to the front of the line by hitting the link in the description below. You guys will be so glad you did. And now, back to the 401. Two days ago, I went in for my first appointments. So don't mind the mush mouth. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hook you up with a new smile. You know, get you Sick. get you back where you want to be. Yeah. Removed a lot of teeth, a lot of stitching. Got a couple teeth to come out yet, but that comes in a couple days. And there's the man himself. What's up? What's up? How you doing? Ready to get started, right. I guess. Good job, <laughs> Boy, there's a lot of hardware on this table. It's kind of scary. I just want to thank all the fans, you know, for all your support of the channel, because none of this would be possible. Really appreciate it. it warms my heart to show all the support of you fans. So uh, thank you very much. So today we're going to be tackling some of the uh, Bondo issues, and we have a fiberglass issue here. I'm going to remove. A bunch of material here enough to get two layers of uh, fiberglass mat across this area but whatever cracks are left i'm going to take and uh, grind them out as well so we get resin down in there real deep but uh we're gonna get her taken care of fiberglass and that not gonna need much these couple scraps here will do everything I need them to do so I just take this with me over there so I've got a little pro form fiberglass resin I'm not gonna need a super big amount we have our hardener so I'm gonna need a couple drops my mat got my scissors and my resin So we got our repair patch in place here. Now I got three layers of mat there. It's fairly thick, good and set up. But I'm gonna let that cure for a couple hours. I'll come back, sand on it, feather it out a little bit. And next I'm gonna be starting to work on some of the little Bondo spots. Got a little spot there, a little spot there. I'm just gonna go around and touch them little areas up. But nothing major. Some of those actually might not even need filler. If I can get behind there, just give it a little couple taps. See if I can't bring that metal back out. Up front here, that I believe was put in there when the nose cone's on to make a smooth transition so you don't have the lumpiness and you'll have edges sticking up. So I think they just did that to make the transition smooth. So I'll go ahead and uh, get that area cleaned up as well. Yeah, that's where we're at for now. That's going to be my task for today. set up real good we'll come back and sand on it and that should be that area fixed up good
we're gonna go back to our fiberglass here. Do a little light sanding on it, see where we're at with it. it does feel bubbled just slightly, but I think we'll be all right. Try that. I'm hoping that's all it's gonna need. I'm just trying to smooth it out a little bit. It's a concave area, so it's not gonna need to be super perfect because you'll never notice it in the concave. But uh, you just don't want it to be hideous. Sometimes when you see something in person but not next to another item, you don't realize that it's not going to work. So we pulled this up here in the hangar. I thought it was like a really big wing cradle. It looked big to me. And then we looked at the wings for the 401. The wings for the 401, I'm pretty sure, would end up breaking this whole assembly. I think it really has to either be steel or it's gonna have to be four by four construction instead of the uh, two by four. We end up using this on uh, for the 172 wings uh, that are down the hangar. So we're still gonna put this to good use and uh, we're gonna build another one. So we fixed the tear. Oh, nice. And then this piece is torn. So I brought a piece out to reconnect this. Yeah, that looks like we needed a shim. way, way, way stronger than what it was too. This whole area in here, we you know we pulled this plate off. If you guys saw, and uh, you know the whole area was damaged in here. So, oh, that looks really good. Awesome, good repair. Yeah, we got to get that cleaned out yet too. But yeah, that really good repair. Looks good. Yeah, I'm ready to rivet now and be Perfect. done with it. Perfect. Ready? I right, hit it. One more. One more. Hit it. More. 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 Yeah, so actually, uh, Matt got a hold of me from Wheelan Aerospace, and they're going to be replacing all the lights in the 401. Like every light that we want, they're going to give us a light for it. So Nice. Yeah, so we're yeah. gonna. It'll be lighter than that. A lot lighter. This thing's like. <laughs> it's a light that's lighter. A light that's lighter. We can put this in the office. You can. Man, there's so much that got done. I think we can actually put this thing back together? No, not yet. No. It needs some color. Unless you're polishing it. No, I'm not polishing it. I'm not polishing it. There's no, no way. No. no polishing going on. No. Yeah, so we got, <laughs> we got all the windows out, including the windshield. Most of the bodywork is done at this point. We still have a ton of stripping to do, but. Joe is here today because he's going to pull the rest of the antennas off and we got to figure out which antennas we're going to use, which antennas we're not going to use because the ones patches. we're not going to use, we're going to have to patch that up. Yes. Um, it's going to be so much nicer without a ton of extra antennas and, and with some smaller, uh, you know, lower voltage, lighter yeah. uh, lights and stuff on it. So we're really looking forward to that. But, you know, we've, we've come so far. I mean, we've got like, we've got a lot done on this 401. How many antennas need to come off yet? Uh, we got one there that's stuck on with a screw and then one, actually two, that's it. We're cool. pretty much done that way. And then cool. I got to fill that hole, dimple these so that we can put screws in them. Sounds good. Um, yeah. Do that one really over there. That's really cool. Awesome, Joe. Okay. 
Well, let's well, we have some it. holes to fill, though. Yeah, this is actually scary when I look at it, to be honest with you. <laughs> Everything got to be machine screws. We successfully broke the drama wheel. Okay. Yeah, it happens. But we also successfully got the screw out at the exact time <laughs> that that broke. Yes. <laughs> and that's one P tube gone. So we just got this package from Dean over a Flying Eye Sunglasses. As it turns out, he had seen the video where the guys weren't wearing any safety glasses and they literally sent us like this huge box. Some of them are bifocal safety glasses because some of the guys here are a little bit older and their eyes are giving out. Mine are good yet, but uh, so I can pick on them. Hey Joe. What's happened? Look what we just got. We just got a whole box of uh, flying eyes. Ooh. Safety glasses. Why don't you open safety one of them up glasses. and check it out? Yeah, they saw the episode where you weren't using your safety glasses. Tis, tis. <laughs> I think you even might have had your glasses on your shirt. Oh, that's even better. And uh, some of these are actually, bif yeah, they're bifocals. So it'll be perfect for you. Ooh. There you go. Yeah, actually, look good. How's the, how do the bifocals work? Pretty good, actually. Nice. Yeah, so, Dean, thank you. Uh, you know, Dean and Flying Eyes team, thank you for sending us these glasses. We're going to put them to work. Well, now that Joe and Keith got the rest of the antennas off, we have a little bit, of, a couple spots there to go around and strip yet. Not many, I count. Five on the roof here. Got one more st spot of body work I'll have to go through and straighten out. We got Trey back for another day, and him and I are going to tackle what's left of the stripping today. We have the belly left, so we're going to get her wrapped up and all cleaned up and ready to go. Like living in the danger zone under here. I know one of you guys is gonna come out with green sludge like all over you, so. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going under here? It's not too bad. Not too bad? It looks like it's coming off pretty good. Yeah, it's coming off a lot easier than all this stuff that get all the sunlight. Yeah, oh, that's true. I guess this yeah. wasn't baked on as much, huh? Yeah. yeah looking good, looking good, guys. Joe and Keith are back, and uh, what are you guys up to today? We are going to install patches over all these holes where these antennas were. All right, and, get them. And clean up some corrosion, obviously, that was underneath them. Yes, yeah, so we found just a little bit of more corrosion underneath a couple of antennas, but... Uh, Joe antennas, he said antennas. Antennae. Washer <laughs> <Marshall, Marshall laughs> machines, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, we're going to be taking care of that today. We have Trey underneath cleaning primer, and I'm over doing body work. So, we're all really busy here today. So, we're going to get moving.
Stinks bad down there. Stinks bad in here too. Mm. Now I'm gonna be starting to work around the nose here. Still gotta strip the nose, but uh, where the nose cone attaches, right behind there, we have a lot of filler, as you can see. I think most of that was just to uh, smooth out the areas where it was really lumpy from the rivets. This nose is fiberglass. There's a lot of peeling in a gel coat and what have you. So I'm not exactly sure what my uh, best plan of attack will be for that but yeah i'm going to be cleaning out all the uh old bondo and filler material here re-smooth that all out now there's a lot of i don't know if it was a double-sided tape in a lot of areas up here there's a lot of goop this side i got a bunch of it through the stripping process so i'm going to look at ways to uh get that to go away so that's what I'm gonna be doing here for the next little bit and also the inside of the nose cone looks like somebody took and just poured a resin to reinforce things make it a little thicker but it's coming off everywhere inside here. So that's just another issue that I'm gonna have to figure out. You know, if I'm gonna have to brush in resin, mix, pour it in, and just move, move it around until it gets everywhere it needs to be. But obviously this entire coat has failed over the years. We have a lot of places where uh, the primer separated from the fiberglass. I think some moisture came through the fiberglass mat and it was lifting the primer. So I'll get all these spots opened up, put some filler in, and I'll start sanding and get it prepped and just smooth it down. And on the inside, I'm going to re-resin the whole inside, which will help seal that up and protect it for the future. So we're going to get started. that I would have been chasing my tail with a lot of them spots and honestly this is the proper way to do it. If we're stripping the rest of the plane we might as well strip this as well but uh, nevertheless I'm gonna get this knocked down and taken care of. We got the nose buttoned up here. We have the uh, body work done. I'm just waiting on some uh, high build sandable primer. We're gonna get some primer on there. And once that primer is on, it's a matter of a quick scuff and we'll be good to go. And we'll be ready for paint. And the inside, I went ahead and got another two layers of uh, fiberglass resin in there just like they did from the factory. Got all that loose stuff out. I did let some behind. It's amazing how much stiffer everything is once I got that resin in there. And like I said, that was the way it was done from factory. So that's the way I did it now. So, yep. As soon as my primer gets here, we'll get that all primed up and that's good to go. All right, well, we got the nose cone here done. Primed it last evening. I uh, didn't have a camera on. I was trying to get it done quick before I left the shop. I wanted it to cure overnight. We got it just about ready. It needs a quick light 
hand sand and maybe a uh, recoat. There's a couple pinholes that I'd like to see filled yet. But uh, yeah, that part's ready. Just about to uh, lay some paint. Got a little bit more to go to clean primer off the fuselage. I got a whole bunch of parts here completed, ready for paint. Got a little bit of bodywork down in the doors here. And those will be complete, ready for paint. Got the emergency hatch all cleaned up. I got a few more parts to strip over here on the table I set up to strip on. Those are the front doors for the uh, landing gear. And as I said, we have just a little bit of cleanup work with primer on the belly. I'll go through, double check, make sure around all the rivets is good. Got just a tiny bit of body work I'm going to throw down over top of the ice shields. Nose is all body work, ready for paint. And like I said, there's a little bit of cleanup to do around the uh, luggage door here. And we'll see there's a big patch of Bondo underneath that I'm going to have to dig out and redo. But for the most part, we're uh, just about there. Another spot of body work I didn't know about. Yeah, hopefully by the end of the day today, the fuselage will be ready to go. Okay, so I'm at the point where I'm going to be doing a lot of multitasking. I got my stripper applied. It's working well. On the other table... In between while I'm waiting on my stripper, I'm going to start repairing all this. Get all these little spots done. That shouldn't take too long. One quick smear coat and a couple of them spots. A little sanding and should be good to go. Next thing that needs some attention is this really ugly battery box. I was going to save this until it was after painted. I don't know what I was thinking because if you look at it, it's bad. I want to make sure there's no corrosion in here. So I'm going to clean this out, strip it down, and it'll be ready for paint. All right, we got that battery box already ready for paint. So we gotta wait for the paint to come for that. So meanwhile, we're gonna get over here. We gotta get this junk, whatever this sealant stuff is, all around all the ledges here where the windows get installed. It's on the front and the back side. So we gotta get this off. We've been trying everything. We tried stripper, we tried thinner, we've tried goof off, we tried everything. But the thing that works best is one of those eraser wheels. So we're going to get that eraser wheel on here. We got to get all this cleaned up. We got to get this cleaned up. We're going to have to paint this uh, a nice trim black again. So this is all, all protected and, and, and looking good. And then, uh, yeah, then it's one step closer to being ready for paint.
clean it up pretty nice though. Yeah, no, uh, without this, this stuff just, this stuff literally won't come off. There's some other areas that I have to, you know, use some thin or something, just a thin coat and, uh, and clean up yet, but it does a really good job cleaning this center portion up. Um, yeah, so, so we just gotta get over here, get a little bit on this side, and then it's done, on to the next thing. So we're moving through all these projects uh, really well, but but guys, man, it, these airplanes, man, they just take they take so much time. So we got to finish the front nose. Well, actually, the front nose is finished. It's all epoxied. It's it's all primed and ready to go. But now we got to fit it to the 401. Make sure it looks good. Make sure everything's matched up. We have to do a little more on the stripping in the bottom. We actually have a little bit of body work we have to fix up there. We found a fair amount of body work here and there on the 401. We want it right, so we're redoing all of it, which means grinding it out and redoing it. We do have the emergency, emergency hatch is stripped, the front luggage is stripped, uh, the right nose panel lower is stripped. We do need to put a patch in there. Uh, strip windshield surround. We have a little bit of work to do there yet. Strip battery box and covers done. Remove doors and strip jams. That's a pretty big job. I gotta, I gotta pull the uh, the piano wire type hinge off of though, so we can strip it. Because I'm gonna do the jams in color, which is a little different. Because normally on airplanes, I find they don't do that. Like a car, you you definitely always do that. But on here, uh, they didn't do that. But we're gonna do that. Uh, patch antenna holes is done. Fix rear tie down. That is done. So let's see if this nose actually fits. You can see what we got over here. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. What's your thoughts on that, Joe? I think ready for some screws. Ready for some screws. Right. Looks like everything mashes up pretty good. There's this pretty hard lip here but i mean i you're just gonna you'd have to really build this up to get rid of that i mean so there's gonna be a little bit of mismatch here it is going from a fiberglass part to an aluminum part uh we did build this area up here i think it looks pretty good i think it looks pretty good can't wait to get some paint on here so before this goes out to paint we're actually going to remove this door assembly the top and the bottom here which it has like this this piano hinge kind of thing going across it. So we got to disassemble this because we want to get this whole inner jam just like we would on a car. I don't really like the way they are on airplanes. We're going to replace all these seals and this is all going to be painted just like the body. So it's going to be so much nicer. We're going to disassemble this whole step right here. That's going to get painted body color as well. So when you're coming up and you're stepping into the airplane, it's gonna look all brand new. We're gonna get MJ Aircraft Interiors to do a custom wood piece for here and for on the steps. And we'll have new carpeting in here. So this is all gonna be brand new. So to do that, we gotta take this pin out of here. So this is all that holds your door on at about 240 miles an hour, a piece, piece of wire. But, but I can tell you it is a pain to get out of there, so <laughs> ought to hold it on pretty good. It looks like somebody ended up putting a doubler on here because it, that attachment point right here, this piece used to hook directly to the side of this, but it looks like it got ripped out at one time. Even the repair looks like it needs some attention. So we'll get that fixed up, get that looking good. We'll get this all stripped and ready for paint.
So we'll get this over to the workbench. We're going to get this all stripped. We're going to get the other door stripped and get it ready for paint. So we got the door off. Now we're going to get in here. We're going to take all these trim pieces off, the surround right here, all the way around the door. So then we can go ahead and get this stripped. <laughs> I think this thing's seen better days. Yeah, it looks a little rough. Yeah, I think we might have to replace that. Yeah, we're definitely replacing both of these. Hopefully they still make these. bad when all the pieces come out in little pieces <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right so we got this all loose we got all the trim off i'm just gonna pull this, this stuff here it's all worn off we're gonna get this all replaced uh so we'll get this off all the way around here and then we're gonna get the stripper out the paint stripper <laughs> then we're gonna get the paint stripper out and we're gonna get this all stripped out all ready to go yeah it's looking good All right, so we got these jams all stripped out. They're ready to go. They're ready to be painted. And man, what a job getting in all those nooks and crannies. But guys, it looks really, really good. I can't wait to see this all painted to match the body. It'll be all smooth. It'll be all pretty and it'll be really durable and it is not gonna corrode. So I've got a call from a buddy of mine, Dan, who is flying in his helicopter which that sounds like the helicopter right there. So that's an Enstrom, I forget what model it is, but it is uh, turbo normalized. I wouldn't mind getting a helicopter one of these days. He was like, I thought like really close, but he's a really good pilot. So um, we got to get one of those. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe we can find an old Blackhawk somewhere. I've never heard of someone doing that. <laughs> What's up, brother? I told you I'd get up here. I told you I'd get up here. I didn't know where. How's it going, man? Good, man. How you been? Good. Yeah, so we got a 280FX, which I think is a 540 turbo normalized and this thing is really sweet yeah like look at those seats that's pretty much that's pretty much how we're going to be doing the seats in the 401 i have a feeling today is a super super exciting day because we are hooking up the trailer here at my house headed to the hangar and loading up the 401 can't wait to get this thing painted so excited Ready to go. 
go. So we had a little bit of a change of plans of how we're going to load the 401 up to the trailer and how we're gonna move it around. We're not gonna be going so far with it as far as where we're hauling it to. Literally, we're taking it from the hangar down to 3D Auto Body, which is 10 minutes away. So we're gonna go with a little bit of different deal. We're gonna get some casters and weld a piece underneath of the 401. It's gonna make it a lot easier, a lot lighter, and just a lot simpler to move. Oh, in the two aisle. The 24 karat gold. Hey. <laughs> nice. Wonder if they have like these like for every wrench. I want every wrench this way. Every wrench in gold. And that's genuine. Gen genuine 24 karat gold. How much is it? 60 bucks. There's no way that's plated in gold. Yeah, that's that's no. impossible. That's that's got to be looks like, like spray paint to me. Spray paint. <laughs> <laughs> what did we come here to get anyway? Oh, wheel oh, casters. casters. Wheel okay. casters. That's right. I don't know about you guys, but every time I come to any hardware store or any tool store, that happens to me um, pretty much every single time. So these lock. Oh, these so these lock. And these are good for 450 pounds a piece. So times four. You know, we got, uh, what, 1,600 pounds. Yeah. So that's gonna work. So we're good to go. Let's grab four of them. So there's one thing I learned a long time ago, is a crew of well-fed people is a crew of happy people. Buffalo pizza, Hawaiian, and a cheesesteak for Joe. Like I'd say at one time, you could have said like sushi was our favorite thing to eat because we go to sit down at Zings all the time. But Milton's over here, man, this buffalo pizza, they made this fresh. They even like cooked the chicken fresh and this stuff is so good. And bacon and ham pizza. I, I think this is like almost one of our favorite things. For sure. What'd you get there, a cheesesteak? Cheesesteak mm. for the toothless guy. Oh. <laughs> Man, I, I can't wait till, till you get your chompers, Joe. Yeah, me either. It's pizza. <laughs> Start yeah. feeding you celery and carrots. <laughs> right. All right, guys, so. We had a lot of stuff happen in the last couple days. We've been really kicking ass on the 401. We've been working so hard. Joe's been working hard. We're just about ready to load this thing up in the trailer, but we had another wrench thrown into, you know, everything here. So we were gonna use this trailer. We were gonna load this trailer up on that trailer and it's just not safe. And, and we built it to be safe. It's just not gonna be safe because it is gonna be, it's the max width of that trailer, which means that the tires are gonna be sitting right in the edges of this trailer. Look guys, I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. It was supposed to be what made it safe. We have a workaround for that. We actually have some wheels that we're gonna mount up. Underneath the mounts on here, we're gonna take those pieces of steel, square tube, we're gonna put them, mount them right underneath here, which is narrow width, narrower width, and we're gonna take some, uh, some locking casters and mount to it. So we figured that out. We were just about ready to get that welded up, then loaded up on the trailer here. And then we actually got a call too from the body shop that we're taking this to. We were gonna go ahead and give it its acid bath there and alodyne it there, but it looks like it's not gonna work to do that. We're gonna have to do it here in the hangar. The biggest thing with this project really is getting it done right. And I don't want to rush through this. I don't want to make a mistake here loading this in the trailer. I don't want anything to happen to it. So unfortunately, instead of it going to the paint shop today, it's going to be a couple more days till we can do that, which is uh, probably the third time now that we've rescheduled uh, to get into the body shop, you know, but there's just so much work. There's, we've been working so hard on this thing and it has to be right. It has to be safe. So we're gonna get back to work on this, guys. Thank you for being part of the rescue crew. Please, if you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe. We love having you here. Thank you guys so much. Take care.